Hi, and welcome to the first episode. Uh, I'll be talking about Jenkins today. It's continuous integration software to automatically build uh, all your code. It can be used to automate a lot of stuff. And uh, I'll be showing today uh, how to uh, get it up and running using Docker easily and uh, how to build some uh, data core code using Docker as well. So uh, you can see a bit about it here. It has a simple website. So uh, I'll be hosting my example on AWS LightSail. It's pretty easy to get up and running. And uh, I'll just sign into the console to show you how. So right here we have the Amazon console. If I just search LightSail, I can find it here. As you can see, I actually already have a server up and running, but I'll create a new one for today. So I'll just press create. I'll uh, only have a OS installed and I'll install Docker from scratch. I'll just pick Ubuntu, but you can pick whatever you want. Just to have some more CPU to work with, I'll pick these. Not the sorry, cheapest one, but two CPUs. You can call it whatever you want. And yeah, it's pretty much ready to uh, get up and running. So if I just press create, we can just wait a moment and wait for it to get up and running and then connect to it and install Docker. While we're waiting, we can look at how we can install Jenkins. There's an easy Docker script here for installing it on your own machine using Docker. The only thing I'll be changing is putting a port 80 so it uh, will be ex yeah, accessed by the web. So let's see the instance is up and running. It is. So I can connect to it here. Just wait for it to open. And there it occurred. I'll just try again. Login failed. Let's try again. Unauthorized. That's a new one. Hey, now I'm in. So let's see. I can start by installing Dar. So I will start installing background, but you can see here, this will be the web access. This is some Jenkins options. I'll be storing all the Jenkins builds and yeah, settings in these directories and it'll be using this Docker image. So let's see. Still installing. Okay, so it's up and running. So as we can see, this is not working because I'm not using sudo. I have no images. But I would like to be able to use Docker without using sudo all the time. So I'll just insert this command to add Ubuntu user to use Docker. And then I'll just give it a quick restart. And then I'll just close this window. After a few seconds, this should be up and running. Then I can start the download and running then I can start running the image. So let's try. Still waiting. Could be up in a few seconds. would be with me. Yay, at last. So, as I showed you the command before, it will start downloading Jenkins and that uh, would soon be ready for me to uh, use. You can also use services such as Digital Ocean, Linode or anything 
else, some cheap, cheap riders. I chose to use AVS Flight Sail because I've been using it before and I already use AVS to host my blog and various other projects. So we just need the final download. It should be there in a few seconds. So it's up and running. So we should actually be able to see the server now. Okay, Clink is, is uh, preparing to uh, get up and running. As soon as Jenkins is up and running, we'll be needing the admin password, which we can find on the server, as you can see here. We can find it in here or we can find it in the logs while we were installing it. So if I go back here, I can say Docker is all to see all the processes. I can see it's the first one here. So Docker logs AF and then I can see it here. Please use the following password for installation. Yes, I'll just copy paste that. Paste that in here, continue. Ah, uh, no thank you, and um, no thank you. I'll just install the suggested plugins. One thing to note, the Docker image I chose is the Blue Ocean one. It uh, adds a nice UI to uh, Jenkins, so it looks like all the fancy cloud providers out there making build servers. You can see them, uh, wow. So I'll just need to uh, make a user. I'll just call it Tuxway Code. I'll just use my password manager to uh, create a password for me. I'm not going to save it because uh, I'll be deleting this resource afterwards and I'll just uh, pop to fill with my email. Save and continue. The Jenkins URL, as we see here, you can have a custom domain or you can just keep this and still point at it on it at a later time. I'll just press save and finish. Then I can start using Jenkins. So now I'm logged into Jenkins and you can see this is a pretty awful uh, UI, but I installed the Blue Ocean uh, plugin so we can switch to a nicer UI look. I have no uh, build pipeline so I can start uh, yeah, my first project. It already has a lot of templates, I'll be using GitHub. I'll create an access token for my own uh, project. Give it some name, test Jenkins token. I'll just generate a token here. I'll just copy this token into my UI here, connect. Somehow it failed. I'll try to create a new token.
don't know what exactly went wrong there, but uh, yeah. I can pick uh, the user and then I can find a repository I want to build. I already have a repository I've made ready for today. It's a, this .NET Core repository and in this repository I have a Jenkins file open. The Jenkins file is uh, the file that describes how my build is going to be run. I'm going to be using a Docker agent to build this uh, project with the Microsoft uh, .NET Core SDK installed on it. I'm going to pull the code down on it and then I'm just going to .NET publish to, yeah, to build the .NET Core project. It's a pretty simple project without any too much in it. It's a default uh, NBC project, so not much to be said about it. But I'll just find it in here. .NET Core. Finds the first project here. So if I go in and see the logs for the project and check out the code, next step it needs to pull down the Docker image. This will only be done once because it uh, didn't know about it. In the future, it will uh, have cached all this so it doesn't take so long time. So it will probably take a minute the first time we run this and all this. Rest times it will uh, take like 19 seconds or so. We can just try to see when it's done and run it one more time so we can see it doesn't take that long time. So we can go out to the start here and we can see the UI. It's pretty simple. You can see uh, the branches. Right now we only have master and it's starting uh, building it. You can also go in and make pull requests and make builds on your pull requests. So right now, it's still downloading the dark image. It's just done and it uh, built the code pretty quick. So that's pretty simple. So if we uh, go in here and go back to the build overview, I can ask it to run again. You can see the first time it took one minute and eight seconds. But the second time we don't have to download the dark image, so we just pull down the code and build it and it should go really snappy. So if you go in here, oh it's already done. So it was done in like 14 seconds. So it used less than one second to pull down the code and then it used seven seconds to build the code. And it took about 14 seconds in total for me pushing the button to starting all the actions. If we go back, you can remember I had a uh, chose my computer with two cores, so I actually have two build agents available on this machine. So if I re whoops, if I rerun both, it should put the two in queue. Oh, I actually then put three in queue. So two of them should actually run at the same time and the last one should be put in queue for afterwards. So you can see that the two, two ones should be uh, done in a few seconds. The first one is done. The second one should be done now, yeah, exactly. And then the third one is first starting after the first one done so it will take a bit longer so it should be done yeah now as you can see this is the nice UI if I go back to the demonstration I have the entirely same UI just the uh, which much uglier so you can see all my builds here I can rerun them in here and all that but I, I like uh, the blue ocean UI much better so that's why I chose this image so, but it's not really scalable to have to click every time you want to build. So the next step would be putting up an automatic build whenever there's code changes. And you could actually do that in here in GitHub, make a webhook. So if I just press add webhook, if I find the IP from my Jenkins server right here, too many tabs. in here. I just need to slash github webhook. I just change this to uh, application JSON and then I can just push whenever. So if I add this webhook, you can see it went find. 
So now when I do changes, it should automatically build in Jenkins. So if I go in here, I can see uh, I have one passing. So let's uh, break the build. Let's go in here and, oh, program, that looks fun. Let's do something awful in here. Let's just, uh, yeah, like, uh, remove this. Commit changes. So we're going to, uh, yeah, just add. So we're going here, we can watch it be built for the first time using the webhook. Just reload. It has failed. It took 11 seconds and it failed. So uh, if I go back to the code, go into program, I can add it over here, edit again, put it back in. Build. Awesome. So in here, shortly there should be a webhook call that should start a new build. So you can see here, push your went. I can actually also go in and watch the commit that did it. So here's the commit and the branch. So we build it it's all up and running again. So that's pretty much all you have to do to get a simple CI, CD pipeline up and running. If you want, you can add things like deploying it to your AWS servers or your Asia servers or whatever you have uh, available to you or your own uh, local host servers if you want. So that's all for this time and thank you. Bye-bye.